Hello, welcome to this webinar between Future Electronics and Cypress. The webinar is called Cypress's Capsons, your one-stop shop for capacitive sensing solutions. And the idea is to discuss how Cypress has been a clear leader in the capacitive sensing solution industry. And uh, we're going to go and demonstrate some of the products that we have, how easy it is to get up to speed, and what are some of the differentiators that sets us apart for capacitive sensing solutions. We, uh, the idea is this is going to be a very hands-on type of uh, webinar, so we'll show some examples, we'll go over the tools, and basically uh, demonstrate why we are the industry leader in this market. So let's get into it. Cypress is the number one solution in sales since, since its introduction in 2003 with over 1 billion units in the field. We basically started the capacitive sensing markets uh, around 2003 uh, with some uh, consumer uh, products that were using capacitive sensing uh, to replace what uh, was previously done with mechanical buttons. Uh, we introduced the technology and we stayed, we've been staying ahead of the competition ever since. By 2008, we introduced liquid tolerance because uh, the CapSense application uh, was being used in different uh, home appliances that uh, where, the, where liquid was present and that uh, made the design a little bit harder. So we introduced liquid tolerance, making our algorithm, uh, enabling the algorithm to actually operate under liquid tolerance and started working with proximity sensing in order to uh, improve noise immunity of the systems. By 2010, we added smart sense. Basically, by understanding what, are, what were the cycles of design that our customers were facing, we added this technology that's one of our, our differentiators that helps us um, easily um, create a, a CapSense system and easily keep it tuned across different, across different production cycles. And we'll see some slides that uh, explain this and basically remove the need for a manual tuning in a system. By 2013, we had shipped over 1 billion units in all kinds of different products. And not only that, we kept uh, developing the CapSense algorithm. And now, in 2016, we proudly released our fourth generation that's powered through the PSOC 4S series. Uh, this new generation offers a lot of uh, features that we're going to go over uh, in our following slides. One of the key elements of PSOC, um, and maybe it's a topic for another discussion, it's the flexibility involved. So we're able to use the flexibility in PSOC, our programmable system on chip, to actually um, enable you to do all kinds of uh, configurations for your caps and solution. We reduce on 50% the, the average current consumption. We're down to three micrograms per sensor, and this is, you know, as we're operating it, uh, and one of the great things is the SNR. The SNR is basically the signal to noise ratio and is what allows us to, uh, to still detect touch and trigger actions based on a, on a noisy environment, right? And again, when you're doing it in your lab and you have your setup, uh, it's a very controlled environment. The problem is once you go out there, you have uh, power surges, you have a different uh, uh, electromechanical uh, problems, you have uh, Electromagnetic, electromagnetic noise, you have interface, and all of these are actually obstacles that keep you from, from, from making a, an end product, right? So the fact that we are, we tripled our SNR to 200, over 200 to 1 uh, helps us create a, a very robust noise immune and also implement different things like liquid tolerance, right? This is, again, a three times improvement over the previous caps and solutions that we have. And this, you know, makes it very simple for you to go and, and do the designs. Another thing is the support for mutual cap that helps us, you know, implement other features like liquid level sensing, which we, we can discuss later. And, uh, of course, all of this is aimed at reducing your time to market. And, again, we're all about ease of use, making it easy and robust for you to go and, and play with it. Now, um, as I said, the main, one of the main drivers of uh, captions was the evolution of user interfaces, right? A lot of these uh, consumer devices started to move away from mechanical buttons and started to implement different, uh, very slick user interfaces where you can just, you know, touch, you can wake on proximity, you can do all kinds of nice things that make it look very nice for all these high-end uh, applications. Now, as the technology also evolved, we started to see uh, that trend moving into other other markets, right? It was it was uh, evolved evolved to a point where you can find our captions almost everywhere. Now the problem is that you need to do this leaky interface, but you want it to be also very 
uh, reliable, right? And uh, not only reliable, but also robust, because all of these uh, parts, their 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 lives is spent in very noisy environments. You know, everything like kitchens or industrial um, environments. So that they get exposed to dirt, they get exposed to uh, to water, to all kinds of things. So these are some of the challenges that have led again the the creation of the capsins evolution. Now. What are some of the problems with mechanical buttons? First of all, they're, they're old-fashioned. Uh, they, they've worked, they've done their, their duty for the past you know, several decades, but now you, know, you see a mechanical button and it starts to look old, right? So the consumer, the end consumer, basically you and I, we want nice things in our houses, we want to you know, interface with uh, what we think it's modern uh, applications and modern appliances. And the making a sleek and reliable user interface is key for this. Right. Not only that, but there's also a maintenance aspect, right? So in, in, for safety reasons in different environments, you want, uh, you want to be able to control different actions without uh, depending on a, mechanical, on, on a mechanical system that can you know, wear, that can break. So this, the nice thing, one of the nice things about Capsins is that it enables all of these solutions to play and to, and to work through a long time without the need for, for maintenance or the risk of breaking, for instance. <clears throat> Another of the, the trends and one of the, the challenges of using captions is the moment we realized the capabilities, we started to you know, get creative, as I was saying, right? So now we're talking about uh, curved overlay, for instance. It's taking the, the, the slick design to a next phase, right? What about if I use different overlays? You know, that's another thing, right? We started with you know, glass, but then glass breaks, scratches, so you needed different materials, different overlays that provide a different um, uh, capacitance, capacitance needs, and uh, there's a mechanical aspect as well for assembly, for manufacturing, and uh, all of these are challenges that we are facing in the lab as we're developing these solutions, right? So that's where we started to develop a lot of these uh, SNR um, improvements and uh, helping with the tuning of the process, right? So it's not the same thing as you're do developing, as the images show, uh, a wearable that's going to be used, you know, battery operated, and it's going to be used uh, curved uh, resistant uh, interface that if you're working with you know an interface for an industrial environment or even a medical one where you're wearing different types of gloves all of these are the considerations that you need to have in mind as you're developing because again if it can work great when you're using your finger but what if you're using a uh, latex glove or maybe an industrial leather glove whenever you're using both on the same application your tuning needs to be done accordingly or needs to adjust to that right Let's keep all of these things in mind for when we are demonstrating technology. And finally, this is one of my favorite parts, is as, as I mentioned, um, as, as you guys starting to learn the capabilities of the technology, you're starting to push the boundaries of it. And now we see it all over the place in all kinds of applications. Um, and that, of course, brings more challenges to us to make the system more immune to noise, to make it resistant uh, to different liquids. So it all started with water, but what about you know different oils or different substances? So we started to make it um, easier for you to develop with the characteristics that you want. And that's how things like proximity came to play, how liquid tolerance li come into play. And sometimes, you know, great example, sometimes you want to repel liquids, you want to make sure the system works in spite of water presence. Sometimes maybe you want to detect liquid, detect liquid, uh, liquid level sensing, for instance. And all of those are, are ideas that come by the understanding of the CapSense technology. And that by using CapSense and using PSOC and using Cypress products, you're able to actually take that technology and use it in your advantage. It's not a, a lockdown solution that can only work, you know, for certain, certain uh, aspects. And we've seen customers come up with all kinds of crazy uh, designs and ways to use capsins for sensing different capacity All right, so these are the, some of the project, the problems that we understand you're facing with and some of the things that you like about a product. So that's, um, that's what drives us to improve the technology and make sure that it works in whatever, with whatever objective you're trying to, uh, to achieve. All right, so how does capsins work? Right? This is a very simple slide that you know, uh, breaks down uh, another significantly complicated aspect into a very simple couple of images. Right? As I was saying earlier, a capacitive sensor is basically used to measure the change in capacitance between, in this case, in the case of uh, self-cap, between the sensor and ground. Right? 
So what we have in the first image shows is basically you have uh, some copper that acts as a sensor. Then you have, in many cases, an overlay so you don't expose uh, the, the copper to the outside. And then that creates a little capacitance that you're constantly reading. Now, when your uh, finger, or for that matter, any capacitance uh, changing material um, comes in, in touch with or, or approaches the capacitive sensor, there's a disruptance in the capacitance that then changes the, the overall system capacitance. And that, by doing the readings of those signals, we kind of digitalize it in what we call uh, raw counts. So by having some noise and by having a baseline, we then realize there's a spike in the touch, uh, in, the, in the raw count, which we then assume, or by, by setting the threshold, we understand that as a touch. Right? And so we kind of take a lot of analog uh, signals and a lot of readings and basically digitalize them into a, a raw count and a threshold. Now, as I was saying, if you just go out and, and, and Google for solutions, you can, you can implement very simple or very simplistic capacitive sensors with all kinds, you know, maybe all 8-bit technologies, right? Where you're just basically uh, using a GPIO to, to try to detect this kind of threshold. Now, uh, it's very simple to, to think about it like this, but as you're, again, moving into a more, more complex system or you want more reliability or ease of use, then that's where the tuning becomes very important. And then that's where um, a lot of people come back to us. I can't tell you how many how many customers, how many projects we get of people that tried somebody else's. It worked great through design and started to work through production, but eventually failed and they had to come back and you know, really fast uh, do a change to make sure that the product is still reliable. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot more detail on the technology, but I highly recommend you take a look at the, the Getting Started with Cavsense application though, that you can find on our website, and I'll give you the, the URL later in the presentation. That is a very extensive and super helpful guide where we discuss everything from the way uh, Capsense is implemented to uh, hardware consideration, design considerations. We have a whole other admin that talks about you know design guidelines. And all of this is information that we provide to you um, so you can make sure your solution works. Again, I think that's one of the advantages of uh, going with the industry leader. The fact that we have all the, you know, the, the technology, the, the, the patents, all the IP, uh, that has been developed since the beginning, we're, we've got you covered there. So by using this, you have access to all this library of, of information that's great for you. Okay, so this is a little bit what I was telling you about regarding the, the tuning way in which the design cycle works, right? Our Cypress technology, SmartSense, basically helps with auto-tuning. It monitors and continuously maintains an optimal capacitive sensor's performance. So this kind of reduces or actually eliminates the need for manual tuning, right? If you still go to our competitors and they talk about captains, most of the design cycles go like this, right? They do a little, uh, everybody does the PCB layout, the basic mechanical design, the electrical design, and they come up with a working solution. It's the prototype, normally everybody shows to their boss saying, there, it works. However, as the firmware and the hardware work together and move into system integration, that's where we start to see different things like, oh, well, now the system has to work with an overlay. Now, the, maybe you used a particular overlay for your demo, but, you know, purchasing bought a cheaper overlay material with a different capacitance, and now it doesn't work anymore. So you have to go back, and you, you do a little bit more tuning. A lot, of this, a lot of our customers offer these nice tools where you can go and you can see, okay, now my, my sensor now is reading 10 instead of 8, so now I have to tune it again. Uh, that works great, and then we go into production. And most of the times nowadays, production goes into a factory somewhere else where, where the same doesn't even have access. You can make go to you know, other state, other country, other continent. And uh, we have no control of, let's say, somebody's using a different kind of glue. Or maybe their process isn't spreading the glue the way it's supposed to, and the overlay has, ends up with a thicker or thinner layer. And all of that creates products that need then more tuning. Right? So you have to go back, you have to retune, and then you send it to the, to the field, and what happens then, as I said, is now you have a noisy environment, now your overlay is being uh, slowly peeling off or it broke, and then your capacitance change, and now it doesn't work anymore. How does SmartSense help with that? Basically, our, 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 our system enables you to do the design to create your development in firmware, in, in hardware, firmware, integration, and SmartSense actually helps us with that tuning along the way. 
So every time you get a, a thicker overlay, you think of different glue, you have a different capacitance. The copper uh, traces used for the PCB manufacturing are thinner because they're trying to save a couple of cents. All of those things are, are, are taken care of by, by SmartSense. So this, it's to me one of the great differentiator, the differentiations that uh, Cypress has against the competition. This is IP that, that Cypress has. So I, I strongly recommend that uh, you take a, a deeper look. Now, we like to say that our captions and our products just work. And this is not, a, you know, it's, it's not just a marketing slogan. We take it very seriously at Cypress, and we've, we've spent a long time testing, engineering, designing, uh, uh, and testing again the solutions. We go through a, a, a very long extent of, of efforts to make sure your, your solution works and that we take care of you. So that's how we've, able to, we've been able to, to exceed customer expectations in terms of quality and, and uh, and performance, all right? Our, our captions systems just work because of the, the engineering and the testing. It's not just something we say. Now, as I said earlier, as we have this robust and flexible solution, we started to get creative. And we enabled one of, again, one of my favorite um, applications, which is proximity sensors. Our proximity sensors can um, basically sense distance up to 30 centimeters. And uh, the SNR that we have ensures that we have a reliable touch, right? Basically, as you're going to see in the next slide, proximity is basically a, a, a different type of reading on the SNR. We do the same kind of measurement, but the threshold changes. And this enables us to do very um, uh, slicker interfaces, right? Because let's face it, so for instance, when you take your cell phone, it has a little IR for you to uh, avoid you to hang up a call when you're answering it. That little hole through, the, through which the ER needs to, needs to go through, you know, it takes maybe a couple of cents that if you multiply it by the volume that you know, some of these customers manage, it becomes a lot of money that you have to spend in, in drilling little holes in the bond that you have. Uh, it doesn't look as nice as a very you know, close and slick interface. So by using proximity, you're able to basically, by the use of, of, a, of a wire trace, you can actually implement the very same functionalities, right? How many times have you gone into a public restroom where you have to, you know, play around and dance with the IR to try to get some paper out of the little electronic machine? All of that is because of different conditions through which the IR is being exposed. With captions, all of this can be easily solved in a very low cost. That's also very important. All right. So we have this proximity sensor in all kinds of solutions. It helps us with uh, everything from power consumption because you can basically have your system asleep until you approach and then it wakes up. Or you can actually make it something uh, that's not only efficient, but also very, very nice to look at, all right? So once again, it also enhances the reliability by eliminating the, the need of uh, mechanical contact and mechanical parts, uh, manufacturing, drilling, and all of these things. And of course, you know, as I said, you know, the power consumption is a lot uh, less than in normal proximity solutions, such as IR sensors. Now, how does proximity work? It's, again, you might recognize these three images. It's very similar. Now, the only difference is we have our system that has our set um, capacitance, but what we do now is we actually do a reading uh, a little bit more, more uh, sensitive so that we can have a distance reading, and then we can detect not only when you have physical touch, but, but when you have uh, a proximity approaching, right? If you can, if you think about it, even when the when we're implementing basic mechanical replacement, you have an overlay, so you're not really touching the copper. You're basically touching an overlay that has different thicknesses depending on the application. So this is basically an extension to that, and by making it uh, robust, you can make it work just as just as good, right? Now, as you can see, this graph is very similar as well, and it, basically because it's the same principle, we only are going to see a change in the raw count, right? Because then we're going to do a different sensing for the threshold, all right? So once again, same reference to the getting started with Capson's guide. There's a whole chapter on, the, on it that explains it a lot in more detail, so I strongly recommend you take a look at it, and I'll, I'll give you the URL afterwards. All right. Now, one of the objectives we had as we were developing this technology is how we can make it easier for everybody to play with it. A lot of the, the customers, a lot of the applications we're going after uh, and we're trying to in introduce the technology, they were guys that had mechanical experience. They weren't really savvy. They weren't really code guys or software guys or firmware guys. 
they just had a system that had a mechanical, the, a mechanical part they were trying to replace with a, with a sensor just to make it a, a nicer looking. A lot of these were, were legacy products. Maybe somebody did a, a user interface, a thermostat, you know, 20 years ago. And they just wanted to replace the mechanical buttons with the cap service buttons. And we came up with our, our Captain's MBR3 solution, which is basically an IC that contains all the IP for captions, and it's, make, it's very easy for somebody to just go there, set it up almost as a switch, and then they have a, a, they have a nice looking user interface, right? So our, our design cycle pretty much went like this, right? Somebody had a couple of buttons, they would just go download and, and free software and program or configure the part to whatever needs they had, and then you had a, a user interface. Now, this is also very accessible. As I said, the software is completely free. We also have um, uh, a 25 board, which is this one, and we're going to go into a little bit more detail. And we have also a guide that helps you and walks you through the whole process. This little uh, block diagram shows these are some of the parts that we have, and we have a variety. So some people wanted to replace only two buttons. Uh, this basically can act as a switch where you, you, know, you get a touch, and you can just toggle a pin, so it's almost like a switch. Uh, and then we added up to 16 captions buttons that can be configured, you know, to do a slider, to do a rotary, to do a proximity sensors, and all of this basically interface through a, a general purpose output. Or you can use it as a slave to a, to a main MCU or MPU, so if somebody has an application and they're, they used to be, you know, reading GPIOs, now they can just implement this to Ice per C, save themselves a bunch of uh, pins, and actually make it work. And we also added things like a buzzer and a couple of other features we'll see. Now, this part have uh, all the technology that we were talking about. It has the smart sense. You can activate it. You can tune it. You can do everything you want. Uh, they're very nice, and we're going to play with it a little bit in the next couple of slides. The design cycle and the project, the demo that we're going to make is uh, we're going to implement a couple of uh, buttons. We're going to use our, our software. We call it our easy click software. We're going to select the, the um, MBR port we're using, which is right now is we're going to use the board that uh, I was showing you. And uh, we're going to basically enable a number of buttons. In this case, we have the board count with uh, four buttons laid out. So we're going to use those. Um, we're going to also um, configure as an output, you know, maybe you want to toggle the LEDs. We'll probably use the buzzer. We'll activate a shield or something. So we'll do that tuning. We'll program it, and uh, I'll see it work, right? Now, another nice thing, this, the same software actually has a system diagnosis, which is a little system that helps us do testing and, and, and uh, testing different configurations for prototyping and production. So it's a full tool. Again, it's completely free, and it's a great way to, to uh, get, get started, right? So I'll turn on my, um, my webcam. Maybe give me a minute right now. I'm going to make this. It's going to be a live event, so bear with me. There you go. When I see the board, it's here. Let me adjust a little bit. There it is. So this is the MBR tree board that I was telling you about. We have different uh, buttons there. We have the different buttons. Uh, it's actually a shield as well. It's Arduino compatible, so you can actually take this board and plug it into a, a one of our piece of Pioneer boards, and it can be used as a slave. So it's a great, easy way to to create a system, all right? Just to add a little bit to the dramatic aspects of it, I also have a little you know, timer here, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna try to do the setup in under three minutes, if you think that's possible. All right, so we open, this is our, our MBR3 software, and I'll just start a new project from scratch, all right? So let's get started. First, we're gonna do new project. As I said, you can use a device selector to choose whatever part you want. In this case, we're going to assign a name to it, kind of pro, uh, folder. That's going to open. It's going to select, enable all the options that that particular part has. In this case, we have, if you take a look at the, the silk screen, we have the following buttons that are the ones routed to it. So with that, we can go ahead and do the configuration. And here you can actually configure the output pins, right? So again, by checking the silk screen, you can actually know that these are the four LEDs that are behind the buttons, and we're going to choose to toggle them. 
Let me move my webcam here. There you go. Now we select a device. This is going to detect the I2C device that I'm looking for in programming. Once I get configured, I can apply the current configuration. It's sending and it tells me it's ready. So if I touch the four buttons, they're fully working now. But as you can see, it's only one minute. So I guess we'll have to do something else to make it a little bit more dramatic. Um, OK, let's do something else. Let's now enable a proximity sensor. And maybe let's change the scanning period frequency and uh, make it a little annoying, and let's put in a buzzer. We do the configuration, and we apply the setting. It's sending the configuration. It's done. So now it's beeping. And as you can see, as I approach, I actually get a proximity reading. Oh, man. So we're 1 minute 50, so let's do something else. Oh, yeah, I know. Let me, let me, I'll do enable the shield. And I'm going to do, this is our, our output reading. And you can ask me, hey, you know, what are we doing with about um, the tuning, right? So let's use the sensor. Let's graph the raw count versus baseline and get it started. This is my proximity reading. So as you can see, the blue is actually the baseline. Now, as I approach, you immediately get a spike. And this is a fairly nice distance. But now let me throw in something else. And let me put in an overlay. The overlay has a capacitance reading. And you tell me now the thing spike. What are we going to have? What are we going to do? So you can see the baseline actually got tuned, and now I can actually continue to read my, my proximity even with the overlay. Now, what happens if I remove it and, you know, something happens? There, it's tuned. My buttons are still working, even if I have the overlay. I can get it tuned. So, okay, there you go. Three minutes. Um, just for dramatics, let me throw in some water as well, and we'll see the same effect. Right? So there you go. We got three minutes. Let me just go over what we did. Um, we did different things in, 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 this, in, in this time. We did the tuning. First of all, we did the, the tuning of the, the, the buttons. We just enabled it very easily. We selected them. We configured the, the output. In this case, we did the total in the LEDs. What happens if I remove this? Just so you know that it's actually. And let me kill the buzzer because it gets annoying really fast. There, I apply there. Let me take the overlay so you can look at it better. Now, it's not beeping anymore. As you can see, the LED just turns on and off. So it kind of acts almost like a like a, like a switch where the GPIOs are controlling the output. And this, instead of an LED, you can actually be reading that of another part, or you can do all kinds of other things with it. All right. So. As you can see, we also did it. We enabled the shield that helped us, you know, with water detection. It helps us following the, the baseline. And the best thing of all is I actually demonstrated, let me show you with the button as well. It works. This is the reading of uh, one of the buttons. So I can actually, if I touch it, I get, that's the spike. On the left, you see the raw count versus the baseline that we have on blue. So you can see immediately the touches and how they differ. Now if I throw them in, you get the same reading and you get the little adjustment and you can still do the reading even through the overlay. Take it in, take it out. So all of this shows us that and I'm trying to demonstrate that not only it's very simple to configure, but it's also uh, SmartSense walks us through and makes us do the, the allows us to do the, the, the development and not have to worry about those things. Even as you're throwing in you know different overlays, and uh, some of the configurations that we have down here, you know, the guard sensor is for water detect. You can, you know, fine tune the duration of the LED, which is, you know, uh, one of the output pin. Um, we saw the, the buzzer. So all of this is easily available. It's really easy to implement. All right. Now let me kill the what? Kind of let's go back to the presentation. So. I hope the, the demo demonstrated how easy it is to do it. It's, it took us, actually it took us less than a minute to do the basic configuration of the, of the GPIO replacement. Uh, and, you know, in the spare couple of minutes, we actually went through and, you know, did all kinds of things with it. Pre-programmed it several times. 
and there was never a need to go back and just fine-tune our initial design. Now, this is um, just a little bit more detail. This is the, the part that we, we, we just used. As you see, we have the electrodes. We have the, here you can see the on the silk screen what I was looking at, the, the button, the GPIOs. Um, and also in the back, and I didn't, I didn't show you that, in the back we have the Arduino. This is the Arduino compatible uh, shield, so you can just plug it in. Uh, another nice feature the board has is this little, uh, well, this is the buzzer. It gets annoying pretty fast. Uh, we also have a little way to test different capacitance on the traces, a reset button. So, very complete, uh, nice solution. We have the proximity, uh, proximity sensor around here, and all of this is very well documented. I want to make, you know, a little emphasis. Cypress is extremely conscious and, and extremely, uh, I would say, obsessed with the quality of documentation. So, if you go down and you download all of this software, we have great documentation help. Uh, we have application node, example codes. So it's very easy to, to, to work with it. Now, uh, as I said, this is a very simple, um, let's say, prepackaged solution. It's very simple to get started with it. But what if you want to do more with it? What if you want to do, let's say, you want to do your whole application with it? Uh, this, basically, it's part of our, our PSEC technology, as I said. So PSEC is our programmable system and chip, which is basically our, our microcontroller that has a lot of flexibility in terms of um, programmable analog, programmable digital features, and all of our PSEC products actually have capstans. So if you're trying to do more, let's say that you're trying to migrate your whole solution and move away from an 8 and 16-bit platform into the ARM, we have PSECs with uh, ARM Cortex M0, M0+, Plus, and, um, and a lot of other cores, and uh, all of these help you implement beyond capstans your whole solution. Now, all of these enable their, have reliable low power capacitance sensing solutions and make it very simple, right? So as I said, the PSEC 4S series, uh, the 40,000S and 4100S, both have this fourth generation that, uh, that has all the advanced features and all the cool functions that we talked about. And uh, so basically the idea is we, we help you. This is, a, as I said, this is just a configurable solution. You can also take uh, our PSOC creator, which is our IDE, and just drag and drop a caption solution, double click, and you do the setup almost as easily as you just did with the, and with the easy click. So we offer a great uh, range of solutions with uh, programmable analog and pro programmable digital. Now, this is not the right forum to discuss, but this characteristic of PSOC is what makes to me is what makes Capson such a great product. It's the, the whole architecture of our products is different and it's, it goes way beyond what a normal MCU can do. Um, so it's definitely worth taking a look if, if you're not familiar with, uh, with PSOC. So you can just go to cypress.com backslash PSOC, you'll take a great look and, and learn a lot. And uh, it's a great way to, to uh, implement your full solution, not only your Capson's portion. Now, one of the nice things, and just let me throw this in, it's uh, smart IOs. We included that in the piece of 4S series, and it's a, a way in which you can actually do some uh, digital um, digital play with the, the smart, with the IOs at the part, without having any CPU intervention. So it's great to enable last minute changes and uh, hardware changes. So, PSOC and Capsons enable you to do a great replacement of your legacy 8 and 16 bit parts. We offer, you know, the as you all know, ARM Cortex M0 Plus Core is a low power core, so we have the most reliable, lowest cost capacitive sensing solution with this part. There's a quick table, and as I said, all of our piece of parts have capstans, so this is one of the great differentiators that we have against any other MCU out there. And not only that, but now we offer parts that, you know, we offer even four families that are priced between, you know, 25 cents of a dollar and, and a buck. All of these go, you know, from uh, you know 16k of flash all the way to, you know, the buck starts at 32, but the portfolio goes up to 256k of flash, up to 98 GPIOs. We have different uh, analog and digital resources. All of it available today. This is the slide where I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the. Um, the programmable and analog, and analog blocks. We are, Capsense is one of our, uh, basically our analog blocks. This is uh, the configuration that I was telling you about. So once you drag and drop this into, into Creator, uh, you can just select if you want to do a button, a linear slider, a matrix of button, even you know a touchpad, and uh, configure it in a very visual and easy way. 
And this is part of our programmable analog blocks that are part of the PSOCs. I added also two of the, the main blocks that uh, I added the biggest one. This is the PSOC 4200L series. This is our biggest PSOC 4. It has a uh, Cortex M0 running at up to 48 megahertz. As I said, we have 256K of flash. We have all kinds of communication and digital, communi digital peripherals. We have CAN, we have full speed USB, DMA. Um, we have this super funny uh, and, and fun to play with UDBs, our universe, universal digital blocks that help you implement all kinds of uh, amazing solutions. And we'll probably talk about that in some other webinar. Um, and the analog resources. So we have the OPAMs, the ADCs, all these things is what make the product such, uh, so flexible and allows you to do all kinds of things. In this case, up to 98 GPIOs, 96 of which can be used for CapSense. So imagine if you're trying to do you know, 96 sensors, this is the part that you'll, you'll use because you'll have the reliability, the ease of use, and the, and the security that you have with CapSense multiplied by 96, right? This is the, on the other side, this is one of our smallest part of the 4100S series. Same ARM Cortex, in this case, ARM Cortex and Zero Plus for the power consumption at 48 megahertz. It goes from 16 to 64K of flash. Oops. And very heavy on the uh, programmable analog side, right? So we have op amps, comparators, IDAX. Uh, you can use these resources while using captions. So it's a great way to do the solution that you're working with. And this is uh, available as well with the smart IOs that I was telling you about. All right. So how to get started? This is uh, the piece of four L series board that I was telling you about, about, and I highlighted it because there's one really cool thing, right? So this part is featured in the 4200L device that's right here. Uh, it's Arduino compatible, but this is the only board in the market that's dual Arduino compatible. What do I mean by that? We can actually leverage the 98 GPIOs to actually plug in two different Arduino shields, right? So this board, you can plug in an Arduino shield here, and you can actually plug another Arduino shield on the extension board. Or even better, you can actually snap it off through here, and this is actually a CapSense shield, right? So as you can see, we have um, a different configuration of uh, up to, I think, 13 electrodes, so you can actually use this and plug it into any of your other uh, Arduino compatible boards and use it as a, as a basically as a, as a caption slave. You have the proximity headers, we have all kinds, you know, a segment LED connector, you have some, uh, some sensors, and you have all kinds of resources. In this case, you also have uh, a user uh, USB. You have the programming USB connector, and then you have one that's for, for your application, and audio. Right? You can actually do some pretty cool audio applications with it. You can actually control uh, your MP3, MP3 player or your PC through the captions using the USB and then control your audio output as well. So it's a great, very versatile type of board. And of course, this is the getting started with PSOC. It goes over a little bit of the, the broader, the broader explica uh, explanation of PSOC 4. Great app not to go and, and check out. This is the CY8 Kit 046. So you can just um, take a look at that or just go through a cypress.com a back, backslash piece of four, and you'll have access to all of these cool tools. And the other one on the other end is the piece of four S series. This is the other part that I show you. This is a smaller board. It's also Arduino compatible, but it has a lot of features that that showcase the captions capabilities as well. Everything from the form factor, which is basically the size of a little um, credit card, all the way to different ways to evaluate self capacitance, mutual capacitance, etc. Um, by the way, if you're interested in, in a free hands-on captions workshop, you know, make sure you contact your local future FAE or salesperson. Uh, and definitely, we have some great workshops that are hands-on. You'll walk in there, you'll do some labs. Uh, we have a very well-defined methodology to teach this, so you'll you know, get your hands dirty and play with it and be very familiar to go out there and do whatever application you're, you're trying to do. All right? Um, and this... This is the last slide that I had um, that I wanted to show you. This is basically a, a solution example that takes advantage of all these features that we talked about. Uh, we did this induction show up. You can actually see a little video of it online. But basically, we're basically using one single piece of 4L series to create a full solution for any cooked up. We're doing, we're actually controlling four IGBT drivers with the digital resources, the PWMs. 
we're uh, doing the control of the fans for temperature. We're using our analog front end to do the reading on different sensors, humidity, temperature, uh, safety for safety reasons, and we're using capstans to do all the control, uh, everything from wake up and wake and approach and uh, actually control of the, of the IGBTs. So it shows, and this is, of course, has all the shields enabled, so you can you know, play with it, you know, throw in some water, some mist, uh, wipe it clean, and you see no touch, no falls touch today. So it's a great, I think, summary for all the, the Capsense implementation solution. It's very simple to create, and it shows also the power that, that, uh, that we have. All right? So uh, at this point, I think uh, I can try to see if we have any questions. Otherwise, I'm going to... Uh, if you guys have been asking questions on the chat feature, um, I'll take a look at them and I'm, I'll make sure that we uh, we reply to all of these. Um, and also, you know, if, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. My email is uh, raul at cypress.com, R-A-U-L at cypress.com. So uh, just shoot me a note, let me know if you liked it or not. Um, and uh, if you have any interest in, in this, again, make sure you contact your, your local feature FAE or salesperson. All right? So at this point, uh, if you have any questions, I think it's a good time. You can just go ahead and, and, and type it in the chat. Or let's give it a couple of minutes. We have a question about the 0.25 cent solution. Um, that's actually we have a, a variety of, of parts that are on that on that range, uh, Steve. And those are basically start on the on the piece of 4,000 family. Again, if you want to go a little more detail, go into um, cypress.com backslash piece of four, and then the the piece of 4,000 piece of 4,100 are the parts that are start at that price range. These parts all have caps, and these are actually parts that were developed um, to do a lot of these mechanical replacement. They're, they're great for creating uh, smart caps and sensors. So those are the parts like the, the um, 4000S that I showed you that uh, it basically has all the caps and fourth generation and all of this. This is, this is the, we have a full family of parts that are in that, in that family range. So it's, it's not only one, it really depends on what you're trying to uh, to achieve, and you can definitely get something for for that price range. Thanks for the question. All right, guys. Well, I guess that's it. I'll I'll, I'll check out, make sure that to to monitor my email in case you have any other questions. But for now, I want to thank you for for spending the time. Uh, I hope you liked it, and uh, please stay tuned. And we'll probably do uh, some more of these uh, trainings. All right. Uh, have a great day. Enjoy and I'll see you later.